Great. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Township Committee meeting of August 8th, 2017. Ms. Borak, please call the roll. Committee Member Shett. Here. Committeeman Delcor. Here. Committeeman Thompson. Here. Deputy Mayor McCauley. Here. Mayor Sirachi. Here. Administrator Ferreira. Here. Attorney Willard. Here. Attorney Bernstein. Here. That's everybody, right? Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be advised that in accordance with Section 5 of the Open Publics Meeting Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, that notice of this meeting was made by the posting on the bulletin board at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex and notifying the officially designated newspapers that this meeting would take place at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 p.m. on August 8th, 2017. First up is approval of minutes. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the April 25th, 2017 Executive Session Minutes? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? Floor? Roll call, please. Committee Member Shett? Yes. Committee Member Delcor? Yes. Committee Member Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Next, may I have a motion to approve the May 9th executive session minutes? So moved. Second. Comments from dais? Floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Committee Member Shett? Yes. Committee Member Delcor? Yes. Committee Member Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Abstain. May I have a motion to approve the May 23rd executive session minutes? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? Floor? Roll call, please. Mayor Member Schatz? Abstain. Committeeman Delcor? Abstain. Committeeman Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. And may I have a motion to approve the June 11th regular session minutes? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? On the floor? Roll call, please. Hold on. I apologize. It's the July 11th, Mayor. July 11th. Sorry. Do you need a motion on that? Yes. Just re motion that. I'll make that motion. And Second. I know okay. I can. I abstain on this one. Yeah, no. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, okay. I apologize. No Commander Rochette? Yes. Commander Delcor? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Abstain. And Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to reports from committee liaisons. Committee Member Shep. From the engineering department, uh, the four railroad crossings of the Norfolk Southern Line within the township have been recertified by a licensed engineer and the Federal Railroad Administration. They were inspected and found to be in compliance with requirements. I'm not going to read this, of the government. They had all the things in there. Um, with the railroad upgrades being recertified, Hillsborough will continue to qualify for Federal Railroad Administration quiet zone designation along the Nor Norfolk Southern Line, which has a major positive impact on the quality of life for thousands of residents near, near the line. So what I just said is that they're not going to blow the horn when they go through town. Um, from the Purple Heart, last night we had the Purple Heart ceremony. I'd like to thank all the uh, Purple Heart recipients and congratulations to them. They joined us last night for the annual Purple Heart ceremony. i also like to thank uh, the Recreation Department for setting up the event, and they did a great job. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Commitment. Commitment Delcor. Thank you, Mayor. A um, couple items from, uh, from the Police Department. Um, Chief Powell, who's joined us in the back there, uh, wants to remind uh, our drivers in Hillsborough that we will be participating in the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over 2017 mobilization campaign, uh, which will take place August 18th through September the 4th. Obviously, that covers uh, uh, heading into the, uh, the holiday weekend and the summer uh, weekends. <coughs> Alcohol impairment is a factor in nearly one third of all traffic fatalities. In 2015, there were more than 10,000 people killed in crashes involving an alcohol-impaired driver, 29% of all fatalities. Those killed, 69% uh, 
were in crashes in which at least one driver had a blood alcohol content of at least 0.15 or higher. Increased patrols and checkpoints during the period are designed to increase safety on our roadways. And uh, we appreciate everyone's uh, diligence in helping us uh, combat drunk driving. And together, we can reduce drunk and drug driving fatalities. Uh, I'd also like to uh, remind residents and drivers in and around Hillsborough that distracted driving is against the law. The Hillsborough Township Police Department is participating in a distracted driver campaign in an effort to raise awareness and decrease driver distraction uh, through a combination of enforcement and education. Distracted driving can result in injuries and deaths to all road users, uh, obviously motorists, pedestrians, and bicyclists. In 2014 alone, distracted driving uh, related crashes resulting in 3,179 deaths and 431,000 injuries on our nation's roads. In New Jersey, distracted driving was listed as a contributing circumstance in more than 800,000 crashes between uh, 2010 and 2014. We urge all residents and motorists to wait to text and utilize hands-free devices uh, whenever possible. Uh, I'd also like to just give a quick update uh, on the uh, emergency services transition uh, that we completed back in June. Uh, we've had the first uh, couple months, uh, one full month of, of uh, response uh, compliance reports, and I'm, I'm very pleased to say that uh, as of the first full month, which was July, um, the, uh, the compliance rate was more than 98% in terms of uh, responding uh, within the uh, within the uh, time window that's outlined in the contract. The KPI in their contract is 95%, so we're, we're tracking well above that. Um, and uh, so it's good to see the compliance uh, with that. Uh, back in June, it was uh, also north of 95%, and uh, we'll continue to provide uh, updates quarterly on that. But I know this issue has been raised, so I wanted to make sure uh, everyone was aware of the, uh, of the uh, excellent uh, compliance reports that we're seeing out of Robert Wood Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commitment. Commitment uh, Thompson. Thank you, uh, Mayor. A uh, couple things first. I want to thank the Recreation Department for the great job they did at our annual Fishing Derby and Camp Out. Uh, that was last Friday night. Uh, I was lucky enough to give out the awards and also my family, uh, we did the camp out. And if anyone remember Friday night, that was when we had about four inches of rain that came in starting at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, and to the hundred or so brave families that sat out there in the middle of Ann Van Winterworth Field Number Two uh, and got soaked with the lightning, congratulations and thank you. I know we all had a lot of fun, uh, but definitely a uh, wet experience that it's probably the last time my wife will ever, ever participate in. Uh, but again, uh, thank you to all Parks and Rec for putting that together. It was a really good time, and I know everyone enjoyed it, including a signature movie, Space Jam. Uh, which none of the kids knew who Michael Jordan was or Charles Barkley or any of the key players in there. So that hurt a little bit, but it's still a great, great time. Uh, also from our recreation department, the Hillsborough Township Senior Olympics will be held on Tuesday, September 19th, with a rain date of the following Tuesday, the 26th, at Ann Van Middleworth Park. The Olympics will commence from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m., with check-in beginning at 8.30 a.m. The township sponsor event is open to all Hillsborough seniors of all fitness levels, so we look forward to seeing you at the event. And the day's events include a uh, beanbag toss, golf, ladder ball, hoops, uh, or basketball, frisbee, bocce ball, horseshoes, and more. And the medals will be awarded to the winners for in those various um, competitions. The participation fee for that is $10 per senior, which includes the Olympic Games as well as a barbecue lunch that day. Pre-registration. Um, to participate in the Olympics is required, so you can contact our social services offices at 908-369-3880 to register for the event. Uh, also, uh, as a reminder, the library is going to be closing uh, starting today at 1 p.m. and remain closed until 9.30 on Friday, August 11th, due to HVAC repairs or air conditioning repairs. Uh, all programs will continue as scheduled, uh, but the actual library will be closed. Partial services, will, such as picking up holds and museum passes, and basic reference services will be available during that time. However, no other services, including public uh, access to the computers, will be available. And just last thing for me, Mayor, uh, one thing 
I know I spoke to you briefly about it, but I'd like to go on the record regarding affordable housing and the July 10th uh, legislative session that was held in Trenton. I know um, Minority Leader Bramnick uh, asked that a special session be held to address the affordable housing situation that suburban communities across New Jersey are currently facing. Uh, that motion was denied by the majority party uh, and was not heard, so there is no special session scheduled. However, as we know uh, acutely well here in, New in Hillsboro and any suburban town across the state, there is a crisis regarding affordable housing. Uh, the requirements that are being put on towns that cannot provide the services and the effects it will have on property taxes, everything else, do need to be addressed. Uh, I would urge that this body could do a letter, perhaps a resolution at the next meeting, uh, that you would take that into consideration, put on the agenda uh, for us to have an opportunity to vote on, to ask Speaker, Steve, I'm sorry, Speaker Prieto and Senate President Steve Sweeney to hold a special session immediately uh, to address this. So just my quick little thoughts on that, but I did want to go on the record. So, thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And yeah, I know we spoke about that, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. And just going to take a quick poll if everyone is comfortable with uh, having administration to uh, draft a, such a letter for consideration next time. Mm -hmm. All good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we will get that on the agenda for next month. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate yep. it. Thank you for bringing this. And Deputy Mayor McCauley. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. A few notes. I just wanted to say thank you to the library. I was part of their library Build a Better World summer reading program theme, and the Hillsborough Library um, folks displayed a butterfly habitat. So after they raised them and um, they hatched and raised them, we actually released them last week, and I was there for the official release. It was quite nice to see. There's a couple butterfly bushes outside. We released them too, and they went right to them. I was joined by some colleagues here and also some of the members from the library and some of the children program folks that were there. So I wanted to say thank you for doing that and uh, it was a lot of fun. Property owners reminded last day to pay third quarter taxes without interest is Thursday, August 10th. In addition to paying in person, there is a secure mailbox now outside the tax office for hours, um, for after hours. So payments can also be made online now at www.hillsborough-nj.org and you can select the finance department and it will prompt you to the right places. Final tax bills for fourth quarter 2017 and the first quarters of 2018 will be mailed in late September. Notes from the Municipal Alliance tonight. They will be co-sponsoring, along with the Hillsborough Manville Elks Drug Awareness Committee, a free family fun night in, on Saturday, August 12th at Memorial Park in Manville from 6 p.m. until 10 p.m. There was a movie feature at what will be uh, Monsters, Inc. So if anyone's interested in joining, again, you can contact Minda Maggio with any questions. Her number is 908-369-4313, extension 7125. Another note this evening, we have an update on our website. With the use of technology becoming increasingly present in the average household, the need for easily accessible information grows along as well. So our website continues to be one of the most important tools for residents to obtain information about the township within the comfort of their own homes for emergency purposes and otherwise. We're pleased to announce a redesign of the township website in order to enhance the accessibility as well as to provide easier access to the answers for commonly asked questions. So be sure to check that out, www.hillsborough-nj.org. There's some fun interactive um, questions on there too. You can go in and uh, find more information. And that's it for me this evening, Mayor. Great, thank you, Deputy thank Mayor. You. And I've got a few announcements this evening. Uh, first, as uh, administration, uh, as the staff like to call it, the mayor went to camp, he goes to camp. So uh, last Friday, I was uh, joined by members of the recreation department and visit a couple of our summer camps. Uh, at Amsterdam Camp, uh, they actually hosted a haunted house. Uh, and we all went through it. I think everyone made through it. So. Um, and then also uh, over at Orton Road Camp, that seems to be a little bit more of a sports camp where I uh, participate in a little bit of basketball and soccer. Actually, I was getting shot on you know, point blank by a couple of them. So. Uh, but uh, but uh, the camps were going very well, and uh, you know, <clears throat> the kids were having a great time, and the weather cooperated. So uh, next Veterans Day, uh, I know even though we just honored our Purple Heart recipients last night at our annual ceremony that uh, Commander Member Shed had mentioned uh, earlier during his comments, 
We're already looking ahead for our Veterans Day. Uh, that will be taking place on Saturday, November 11th at 8.30 a.m. And we will host a veteran ceremony at the Garden of Honor just outside of the building. And followed by that, there will be light refreshments across the hall in the multi-purpose room. And with that, um, my uh, every meeting uh, comments uh, with regards to staying connected. Um, you can stay connected with all these events and more via our Friday e-newsletter. And we have postcards in the back to sign up. Uh, so if you're not getting an email from me on Fridays, you're missing out on uh, things going on in town. We also do have a Twitter account, um, and um, also through her cable channel, TV29, and Hillsborough's YouTube channel, uh, showcase our meetings and our semi-reality TV show called Hillsborough The Good Life. So be, check, be sure to check out uh, uh, those items. And um, episodes of the Hillsborough The Good Life, it's only 10 minutes, and they're commercial free. So. <laughs> Um, and also, very importantly, if you haven't signed up yet, SWIFT reached 911. Uh, that provides traffic and emergency notifications. And I know uh, I'm signed up for that, and that helps particularly during uh, rush hour to know uh, if there's any, uh, any delays that can uh, drive around. So uh, with that, we are now going to move on to proclamations. And what I will ask is after you receive your recognition or proclamation to please resume uh, your seat while we uh, uh, provide everyone with our proclamation and then I promise we will take a pause and allow you to leave. We know that you really do want to stay but we don't not offend it if perhaps you're going to enjoy some uh, nice weather this evening but uh, we, we, we do promise we will have a pause. And with that I am going to start with uh, the Girl Scout Gold Awards and first up I'm going to ask Anushka Khanna, join me up front uh, with any members of her family that would like to come up to. Whereas, Anushka Kana, a 2017 graduate of Hillsborough High School and a member of Girl Scout Troop 60045, has recently earned her gold award. And whereas, we, the Hillsborough Township Committee, recognize the many hours Anushka devoted towards earning her Girl Scout gold award, working with diligence in order to achieve this highly coveted recognition. And whereas, Anushka's gold award project, Sensory Friendly Art Time, work to address the lack of programs for children on the autism spectrum. And whereas Anushka's project, Sensory Friendly Art Time, consisted of creating therapeutic art programs in our local library to promote peer interaction and give children on the spectrum free opportunities outside of the classroom. And whereas Anushka created activity stations which required the use of motor skills where children were able to engage with one another while keeping their hands busy, which is greatly beneficial for their, for their restless tendencies. And whereas Anushka's program took a year of planning and was a huge success with 20 children participating in the summer activities. And whereas Anushka deserve, serves as an example to the youth of Hillsborough Township through her achievements, leadership, and community service. And we are very proud that Anushka is a, fan, is a member of our community. Now therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee, do hereby recognize and extend our sincere congratulations to Anushka for having earned her Girl, her Girl Scout Gold Award an honor for both her and for those who have guided her, and we wish her all the best in her future endeavors, signed by the mayor and the members of the Township Committee. Congratulations.
All right, I just want to start off by saying thank you. It means a lot. I put a lot of work into this, and so to be recognized, it means a lot, and especially because I got all the help from the Hillsborough Library and obviously the Hillsborough Public System in general. I was able to work with a lot of teachers and, of course, the students, so it's really important. Again, thank you to all of you, and thank you to my parents and my troop leaders and everyone who is a huge part of my project. Thank you. Next, Sydney Townsend. Whereas Sydney Townsend, a 2017 graduate of Hillsborough High School and a member of Girl Scout Troop 61052, has recently earned her gold award. And whereas we, the Hillsborough Township Committee, recognizes the many hours Cindy devoted towards earning her, her Girl Scout Gold Award, working with diligence in order to achieve this highly coveted award. And whereas Cindy's Gold Award project, Increase Awareness of Sensory Disabilities, consisted of utilizing the Hillsborough Public Library to hold workshops to raise awareness about discrimination and ignorance of sensory disabilities. And whereas Cindy's project, Increase Awareness of Sensory Disabilities, provided a brief presentation on history, culture, and common misconceptions, as well as a few activities that included learning ASL and Braille. And whereas Sydney created a Facebook page that promotes awareness for her project and a, co and a corresponding YouTube channel that showcases the exact presentations as well as clips of the activities. And whereas Sydney hopes to increase awareness by individuals with certain specialties as her, as her specialties as her audience grows. And whereas Cindy serves as an, as an example to the youth of Hillsborough Township through her achievements, leadership, and community service, and we're very proud that Cindy's a member of our community. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee, do hereby recognize and extend our sincere congratulations to Cindy for having earned her Girl Scout Gold Award, an honor for both her and for those who have guided her, and we wish her all the best for her future endeavors. Signed by the mayor and the members of the Township Committee. Congratulations, Cindy. Thank you to um, all the library's help, um, all the my mentor, um, and thank you to all of you for this proclamation. Um, without all of this help, I wouldn't be able to be standing here right now. <laughs> Amanda Muller. Whereas Amanda Muller, a graduate of Hillsborough High School class in 2000, Hillsborough High School in 2015, is a senior at the College of New Jersey. And whereas Amanda plays attack for the College of New Jersey girls lacrosse team, and whereas the Lions girls lacrosse team was the number one seed in the NCAA tournament and advanced all the way to the finals. And whereas Amanda scored nine goals and two assists for the Lions, including assisting in a game-winning goal to send her team to the national championship game. And whereas for her, for her efforts, Amanda was named to the NCAA All-Tournament Team, as well as being named to the New Jersey Athletic Conference All-Academic Team. Now, therefore, be it, be it proclaimed that we, the Mayor, and the Hillsborough Township Committee do hereby recognize and extend our sincere congratulations to Amanda for her outstanding performance in the NCAA Division III Lacrosse Tournament and for her impressive academic standing. Be it further proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee, further commend Amanda for the honor she has brought herself, her team, and her community through her many achievements on and off the field. Signed by the mayor and the members of the Township Committee. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 
please. Um, I just wanted to say thank you and thank you to all you guys. It just means a lot to get recognized for school and sport. So thank you. Okay, I'd like to invite down any members of the Rotary Club. Whereas the Rotary Club of Hillsborough will host its 10th annual Rotary Fair on August 15th through 20th, 2017. Whereas the Rotary Club of Hillsborough was originally founded on March 8th, 1955 as a, Rotary, as a Rotary Club of Bellmead. Today, the Rotary Club of Hillsborough has over 40 active members who volunteer their time at various projects throughout the year to help improve the lives of the community members needing assistance. The club meets every Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the Landings Restaurant at 311 Amwell Road. And whereas the Rotary Fair has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars that are returned to the community through charitable contributions that fund local college scholarships, the Hillsborough Food Pantry, autism research, veterans organizations, and many others. And whereas the Rotary Fair features 21 amusement rides, a wide selection of food, a petting zoo, a variety of games and displays by area vendors, along with a fireworks display on Friday evening. And whereas the Rotary Club dedicates one afternoon during the Rotary Fair exclusively for children with special needs and their families. Family Fun Day is an invitation only event where admission, special t-shirts, rides, foods, games, and prizes are free to special needs children and their families, including siblings. Music and lights are subdued as an accommodation to their special guests. And now therefore it be it proclaimed by the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee that the Rotary Club of Hillsborough is hereby recognized for the 10th anniversary of the Rotary Fair. Be it further proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Township Committee, are proud to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Rotary Fair and thank the Rotary Club members for their many hours of service to bring in this family fun event to the Hillsborough community. Signed by the mayor and the members of the Township Committee. Thank you guys. I just wanted to thank the uh, Township Committee for this uh, proclamation. We really do appreciate this. Uh, we look forward every year to the Rotary Fair, and we hope everyone comes out and uh, joins us. And um, I just wanted to especially thank Pam for all her work with the permits, and Anthony for putting together all these, you know, Special Needs Day. And uh, you know, we just really appreciate the Township's help uh, with putting this event together. Thank you. Anthony, more, more importantly, <laughs> what night is bracelet night? Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Perfect. Got to get that out there. Got to get that out there. So, as I promised. No. Oh, I got appointments. Okay. Okay, so very quickly, we're going to have a couple of appointments. Uh, first, appointing John Redden to the Historic Preservation Committee or Commission, seat five for a four year unexpired term, ending December 31st, 2019. And that's a mayoral appointment. Correct. So, Cass, put him on camera. He's in two yeah. right there. Where is he? <laughs> no, no, you got to look. Yeah, yeah. So if, any, so if you got a problem with the sign, we'll make you famous, John. He's the one that's going to. John, you have to stand and wait. Historic sign. Excellent sign. 
And next, I am appointing Charles Ruggieri to the Sign Review Committee, seat three, for a one-year unexpired term ending December 31st, 2017. Again, that's a mayoral appointment. Okay. So with that, we can take our break, right? Okay. So as promised, we're going to take a brief pause. You're more than welcome to stay, but we will not be offended if you'd like to go home. And uh, see you uh, next time and hopefully at the Rotary Fair. So take five minutes. Thank you. Okay, we're reconvening. Uh, just again, just want to congratulate all of our proclamation recipients. And also, I guess for the record, that uh, our planner, David Maskey, has joined us on the dais. Mm -hmm. Space over there? You're good. <laughs> so we do not have any new business. So at this time, move on to public comment on matters not on the agenda. Uh, if there's any comment, please come to the mic. State your name and, and address for the record. Susan Gull for Hunt Club Road. Uh, I have a couple questions. One is um, the ordinance that was passed a few years ago on the maintenance standard for vacant and abandoned properties. Um, it's been effective on some properties. In fact, somebody has flipped over a house over on Fairfield that's now back on the market, and they did a wonderful job on it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a few properties that people are still worried about. The one on Woods Road with the orange Volkswagen. I think it's number nine, but I haven't had a chance to go check that for myself. A couple questions came up. Is there any point at which the township can demolish the building? Is it now posted as unsafe for firefighters? And is there any action the township can take when the liens and fines are higher than the house or property are worth? Anyone? Uh, well, you want to take I guess. Um, <laughs> I, I, you I, you I can go through a idea. process where it would have to be declared an unsafe structure to demol demolish it, so that would be through the building department, but it would have to be actually an unsafe structure. Um, as far as the other thing, the liens and fines, yeah, you can go after somebody. You know, we in the, in the legal profession, when you're looking for a case, um, you decide, well, you can have all the steps, but you can have a good case, you can get a judgment, but some people are judgment-proof. So when you talk about that liens and fines, yeah, you can get it to the extent of the value of the property, but if that's happening with a piece of property, I doubt that person has many assets to go after. Uh, I don't know. Neighbors have tried to reach him. He hasn't responded, that, that's and apparently I'm, the township has at some and, point. And that's, that, that's what I'm talking. Some people are judgment-proof. Well, the other thing um, that that was worried not for people who live close to this house, which probably everybody's familiar with. Um, I'm not familiar with 232-12 security notification and liability insurance. Okay. Um, the first requirement, <laughs> obviously the property is not enclosed and secured against unauthorized entry. The doors are even hanging off. But the thing that was worried uh, most to the neighbors um, of most concern was to acquire and otherwise maintain liability insurance by procuring a vacancy policy covering any damage to any person or any property caused by any physical condition of the property. Uh, does the township verify that? And would that ensure that the neighbors are protected against things like fire damage or rodent infestation, a tree on that property falling? Because the neighbors that are surrounding it are worried about that. Well, a tree falling onto another property, they consider that an act of God under insurance anyway. When, if, you know, remember Hurricane yeah. Sandy, we had how many people had a tree from their neighbor's house fall or neighbor's yard fall on their property and you become responsible what parts on your property. So that one doesn't apply. Uh, when this, I remember uh, I was mayor when we did this ordinance and we modeled it almost directly off of what the state legislature has allowed mm -hmm. municipalities to do. Uh, it, and unfortunately, and fortunately, it cuts both ways. Private property rights in New Jersey is taken very seriously and you have much right to your property as the person mm -hmm. next to you. And at what point does a municipality say your property is unsafe? And that's why the maintenance codes, which are set up and parameters set up at the state level, uh, I believe it was someone in Singleton who did the legislation, gave us sort of a parameters of what we're allowed to do. Mm -hmm. You have to look for, and I believe some of the things in there is overgrown trees. You had to look for newspapers scattered on the property from when they drive around and they throw the newspapers yeah. out. And the Great Hillsborough Beacon, although not always picked up by that house, <laughs> it gets out there when you guys are good enough to give it to us for free. Um, situations like that, you had to hit so many benchmarks before the town could do anything and that's when we put the liens on the property and started mowing the lawns and everything Which like that but again 
the state level has really put in certain parameters. The only way you go outside of that is you start talking about uh, eminent domain. And that gets into a whole another area of <laughs> private property rights that I don't think many people are even interested in going for. Because imagine if governing bodies suddenly start looking and say, well, I don't like your house. We should look to use eminent domain against it. Okay. So it's, it's a very slippery slope. But again, the legislature has given us very narrow, narrow parameters that you're allowed to go after these properties for. Okay. And Sometimes to a detriment. What about the uh, outdoor storage of inoperable vehicles? By the way, that poor little Volkswagen does still have some worth somewhere online. But that is also, that's limited. Yes. Yeah, I was going to try to answer this from a township perspective uh, back as, as, uh, as Cooneyman Thompson mentioned. We had presented this, uh, this ordinance to all the, uh, all the towns in the state, and mm -hmm. our ordinance actually had one best in class for the state. We just got recognized by NJMMA. So we go around to all the properties. So I believe this one just we went through with Dr. Belnay and with, um, with um, our zoning officer, uh, Patrick Gorman, and Fiedler. So we're working with quite a few, and we've gone and, and we've worked with all our local landscapers so we give them a fair amount of work <laughs> so we go out there and make sure we cut this and some of them that we we find the grass is somewhat three four feet high I just spoke to a landscaper actually yesterday so we're trying to maintain all of them the neighbors are much happier and then we take that money and we go back after the banks so once they now see that we're actually billing them they actually start taking care of the property but for the most part they're owned by the banks uh, I'm working this with this one's different. This one's owned by this one is owned an by a, right. an individual who, who pays their taxes. Right. Yes, right. we know. Yeah. So I can, <laughs> it makes it even I more can difficult. tell you that Dr. Belnay goes out to all of them multiple times, and there's only so much we can go out there. We actually have uh, some of the folks even here on the dais have gone out and volunteered some time and trying to fix some homes up. But when they're abandoned, it's one thing. We can do a lot more, and we have. When they're not, it's it's it's, it's tough. We try to get out there and either assist or have fines as well, but I can assure you that the ones that are abandoned, we are working on and doing the maintenance and working with mm -hmm. the banks and actually working with some of the not-for-profits in the area to look if they can work with the banks and provide housing as well. Uh, okay. To buy those houses and then provide housing to not-for-profit organizations. Okay. Uh, so they're aware of it. It has a lot of channels it has to work through. There's a lot of rules and regulations, but you have not forgotten them. Please. Okay, um, I have a question about the mixed-use inclusionary zone ordinance that was originally scheduled, I believe, for this evening. Um, is that being amended or being pushed forward to some future date? That's the ones that are on 206. There's one on each side, uh, south of Mountain View on each side of the highway. No, there's only, there's only one development, and the reason why it's on for reintroduction this evening was there was a, notific a notice issue that had to be addressed, and therefore we're going to resend the notice out for a second reading on September the 12th. Okay, thank you. And since Eric is here, <laughs> I have a question about affordable housing. I know, are we always going to be on probation and parole? <laughs> is there a time we would be cut free from court oversight? Has any other town ever gotten to the point where the court finally said, okay, your probation is over, you're free, or we're just always going to be, are we ever released from oversight? Well, it's not really oversight as much as it's just a, a different mechanism for us to get to the same place. But in some, in some circumstances, it's not the worst thing in the world to have some To oversight. have a court but master. I, at the end of the day, there's no municipality in New Jersey that is freed from state oversight or, or regulation on this. It's a problem that every municipality, has, as Commissioner Thompson was noting earlier, yeah. it's a problem every municipality has and we're no different. And we are fighting uh, what we believe to be right. Um, but the battle is with the legislature. Okay, so, so everybody has this court master thing they have no, to no, go No, 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 I didn't say that. Oh, I so not that. everyone does. I didn't say okay. that. Now the court, the court master, that and, that, and that's one of the problems with affordable housing is the Hillsboro back in the late 90s failed to have a uh, affordable housing uh, plan. And when you do that, you think things are bad now, where we're trying to work with the courts? Just imagine, you take our professionals out, and now the courts become your planners. 
and that's what happened to Hillsboro, and that's why Hillsboro wound up having the uh, the court master assigned to it, and the other municipalities that failed to do their round their their round two affordable housing. So, uh, okay, we are not uh, just to be that. clear. That was pre this committee. That's pre a lot of. <laughs> you us. thought you throw that in there? Uh, oh, I remember sure the olden days. I remember yeah. the olden days. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to yeah, say where you say were at I'm that point, you. but... <laughs> okay, uh, I have a question about the police department. Um, uh, are, the, <laughs> are the police dispatchers being phased out in January of 2018? Where are we with the As of right now, we're looking at, I say, potentially first quarter 2018, and we've been communicating uh, with the chief, with the county, and with our dispatchers as well, as uh, we look at if the county is ready to take on Hillsborough, and that still is a is a viable option. Um, okay. So, so as of right now, we're looking at uh, 2018, first quarter. That's that's our goal. Okay. Now the 911 calls, of course, are I'm currently right. going in to Somerville and have been since uh, 2014, I think. Was when we started that. Um, but for non-emergency calls and walk-ins, do you have any clue yet what arrangements would be made, or is that too far ahead for you to have set still, anything up yet? Still being considered. Right. Still being Yeah, considered. I mean, I don't know if the chief wants to comment or not, but we, we've been working with Bridgewater. Uh, Bridgewater's gone through this before us, mm -hmm. so, uh, and we're happy that they've gone through this before us. So they're, we're, they're working at all the kinks, and when the chief and I and the committee feel that we're in a place that uh, we feel 100% confident, that's uh, that's when we would when something solidified, but possibly the first quarter of 2018. Correct, okay. and and we've been in contact and very open with uh, with the employees here on some of the options and working with them as well. Okay, uh, yeah. uh, and now for Pam, <laughs> I would like to thank her for uh, helping me out in the administrative staff. I had requested that the environmental committee agendas be added to the Hillsborough website, and they were. Um, those are things that are important to people who are in the area where these things are taking place. And now you see less of me. I don't have to run in here to read the stuff up on the wall. I know you'll miss me. Oh, I'm going to take it off then if you're not going to come. <laughs> no, that's okay. We'd have everybody trailing in if I ever talk anyone else into paying attention. Um, well, you're welcome. And I do have one question on the ambulances. Sorry to bring this back up. Um, at the June 13th meeting, I know they were brought over to the DPW yard. Um, they were being evaluated by the staff as to what was going to be kept and what was going to be auctioned off, depending on their stage. Um, I haven't had a chance to go over there yet. Are they being stored outside or inside? So, they're being stored outside, but they are, they are right now being uh, started, and the majority will be auctioned off. Uh, one will be heading to the Hillsboro PD uh, because if you remember back, and I know you probably do, we refurbished four of them. So mm -hmm. four of them are in, in what we believe are very good order. So we will be looking at one for the police department and still maintaining the three in, uh, in hopes that bringing back the volunteer uh, rescue squad. Okay. It just seemed like it'd be better to have them stored inside. I mean, even if you want to change the locks or whatever one does in a change like this, but to have them stored inside, particularly since those buildings were designed to hold ambulances. So, right. okay, thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else would like to uh, <clears throat> provide comment on matters on the agenda? Hi, Meryl Bisberg for Hickory Hill Road. Um, I just wanted to know now that uh, the former Hillsboro Properties is clearly out of litigation, it's not on the list tonight for executive session, mm -hmm. if you can tell us any more than you stated so far in the press. Uh, it's not out of litigation. It's just not on tonight's discussion. Okay, but there's been at least a partial settlement based on the fact that. No. Right. No. The parties are still in discussions regarding a possible mm -hmm. resolution of the matter, and that's all that the committee and township can discuss at this time. Mm -hmm. There was never any discussion that there was a. Pardon? That we never indicated that there was a 
that it was not in litigation? No, you didn't. But I know that there was a financial settlement reached, so I'm no, making I am making a financial some settlement. Not a settlement. That was a, um, we were putting a mechanism into place for the, for <clears throat> the possible acquisition if, if a settlement were reached. We were putting the financing together, the structure of that financing, but nothing has reached to any conclusion. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else would like to uh, provide public comment on matters on the agenda? Okay. <clears throat> Seeing none, we will now move on to we have a number of public hearings. First up is Ordinance 2017 08, an ordinance of the Township of Hillsborough, Somerset County. <coughs> New Jersey amending chapter 188 land use and development article 5 districts and standards section 188-113.1 GA gateway a district of the code of the township of Hillsborough to permit extended care facilities in the GA gateway a district uh, this ordinance was proposed by the uh, plan board to ex to add extended care facilities as a permanent use in the gateway a zone and uh, I need to first uh, make a motion or have motion. Okay, may I have a motion to open public hearing? So moved, Mayor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any discussion from the dais? From the floor. Okay, seeing none, may I have a motion to close public hearing and adopt ordinance 2017-08. So moved. Second, Mayor. Okay, may I have a roll call, please? Commander Burchette? Yes. Commander Delcourt? Yes. Freeman Thompson. Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. <clears throat> Next uh, ordinance 2017-09, an ordinance of the Township of Hillsborough, Somerset County, New Jersey, amending Chapter 188, Land Use and Development, Article 5, Design and Performance Standards of the Code of the Township of Hillsborough, to regulate commercial vehicles on residential properties. Um, this ordinance was recommended by the Planning Board as a result of addressing the issues of commercial vehicles being parked in residential neighborhoods. I have a motion to open public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Discussion from the dais. So, Mayor, just real quick, uh, we did, as you noted, uh, talk about this at Planning Board. I think at the introduction I had indicated that um, it was actually a, a, a a good compromise and balance that was reached. Uh, there was some significant discussion between uh, people in the neighborhoods uh, where, you know, kind of wanted to ensure that the aesthetics of their neighborhood did not have uh, huge commercial vehicles there, but we also recognize that there's a, a business need as well to ensure that we allow people uh, whose livelihood depends on uh, on their vehicles to uh, to be able to park them in their, in their driveway. So, uh, I think it was a pretty good compromise. Both sides, uh, as we work through it in planning board, uh, seem comfortable with the uh, with the approach that was reached. So uh, very pleased with the uh, uh, with the engagement of the public and also the uh, work and the flexibility of the planning board to to reach a compromise that everyone seemed happy with. Okay. Don't forget all the good work Dave Maskey did too. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> I know that that that's been a few months. Okay. David knows more about vehicles than I think he yeah, uh, yes. he, he cares to. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay. Any additional comments from the dais, from the floor? Okay. May I have a motion to close public hearing and adopt ordinance uh, 2017-09? Motion to close, Mayor. Second. Okay. May I have a roll call, please? Commander Shep. Yes. Commander Zalcor. Yes. Commander Thompson. <clears throat> yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Okay, ordinance 2017-10, an ordinance of the Township of Hillsborough in the County of Somerset, New Jersey, authorizing acceptance of dedication of easements from John Zakatowicz. Further, uh, no, municipal land, uh, the municipal land use laws require the acceptance of the property via an ordinance, and this has been reviewed by the township attorney and found acceptable. I have a motion to open public hearing. So move, Mayor. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any discussions from the dais? From the floor? 
Okay, may I have a motion to close public hearing and adopt ordinance 2017-10? So moved. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Commander Burchett? Yes. Commander Mandelcor? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. And Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Next, ordinance 2017-11. Ordinance amending Chapter 147 of the Code of the Township of Hillsborough titled Criminal History Background Checks. Uh, this ordinance amends the Background Checks chapter of the Township Code to streamline the process for our volunteer coaches and recreation employees. May I have a motion to open public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Discussion from Dais? Floor? I have a motion to close public hearing and adopt Ordinance 2017-11. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commander Burchett? Yes. Commander Delcor? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Okay. Ordinance 2017 12, an ordinance to amend an, or an ordinance entitled Salary Range Ordinance, setting forth the salary ranges for the classifications set forth in said ordinance. Uh, this ordinance updates the ranges for the various township posi positions. It does not imply actual salaries for these said positions. I have a motion to open public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Discussions from the dais? From the floor? Seeing none, um, I have a motion to close public hearing and adopt Ordinance 2017 12. Motion to close, Mayor? And adopt. And adopt. Adopt, sorry. It's okay. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Commander Shep? Yes. Commander Delcor? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. And Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Ordinance 2017 13, an ordinance appropriating certain monies held by the Township of Hillsborough, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, for the purchase of various capital improvements in the amount of $804,962.78 in and for the Township of Hillsborough. Uh, this ordinance is uh, for those necessary items recommended as high priority by our capital planning committee. Uh, the purchases are based on what is available from developers' off-site contributions and the capital improvement fund. May I have a motion to open public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Is there any good discussion from the dais? Mayor, I'd like to uh, thank the capital planning committee. Uh, they work very hard to uh, it's a group of 12 citizens. They get together and prioritize what they think is good for the town after uh, interviews by every, de every department. And these guys really put in a lot of time and energy, and um, they're the ones that come up with this. They present it to the planning board. Planning board approves it, and then they present it to us. And we finally get here tonight. So uh, I'd like to thank the Capital Planning Committee for all their hard work. Great. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the dais? Uh, just a quick note, Mayor, uh, from the finance part of it, as the Township maintains a watchful eye over the finances, capital and otherwise, the standard of the Township Committee remains as such as no borrowing uh, for routine capital purchases or improvements for 2017. <coughs> um, we continue to operate on pay-as-you-go plan and approve set the savings to the taxpayers in the future um, by not incurring interest um, in the future years to come for capital pur purchases. So I want to thank the Capital Planning Committee as well and finance team as well to to approve everything. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments? Discussion from the dais? From the floor? Seeing none, may I have a motion to close public hearing and adopt ordinance 2017-13. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commander Burchette? Yes. Commander Zalcor? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes, and coming to our final ordinance, Ordinance 2017-14, an ordinance to amend, revise, and supplement Chapter 92 of the Township Code of the Township of Hillsboro, entitled Police Department, most notable Section 92-7, entitled Membership. Uh, this ordinance establishes the table of organiz organization for the Police Department. And I have a motion to open public hearing. So, so moved. moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any discussion from the dais? Uh, Mayor, just real quick, this, uh, this ordinance, as we talked about when we introduced it, uh, there is a, um, 
There was some litigation that caused a, uh, a state uh, statute that indicates that in order to add any uh, police officers uh, above your ta you cannot add a single police officer above what's in your table of organization, even if it's for overlap purposes or, you know, someone's leaving and you want or to hire someone to go into the academy. It just doesn't give you that flexibility. So um, so this allows us to uh, to take those steps if need be, uh, and also at some point down the road to, uh, to expand the group without having to go back and, and amend the table of organization. It does not mean that we will necessarily uh, immediately fill all the roles in the table of organization. It simply gives us the flexibility uh, to uh, create some temporary room or add down the road as, uh, as we see fit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any additional comments? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, may I have a motion to close public hearing and adopt Ordinance 2017-14. Close and adopt. Second. Roll call, please. Commander Bershep. Yes. Commander Delcourt. Yes. Commander Thompson. Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Moving on to introduction of new ordinances. Uh, first up, 2017-07, Ordinance of the Township of Hillsborough in the County of Somerset, uh, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 188, Land Use and Development, Article 5, Districts and Standards of the Code of the Township of Hillsborough, by adding Section 188-113.7, uh, Mixed Use Inclusionary District 1. Um, see, further consideration of this ordinance uh, will be held, or, or public hearing will be held on September 12, 2017. Uh, this ordinance was recommended by the Planning Board, and as a result of the proposed zone amendment, it would further assist the Township in meeting affordable housing obligations. May I have a motion to introduce this ordinance? So moved. Second. There we go. Ties broken. Uh, any comments from the dais? From the floor. You want to say that? No. Okay. Any comments from the floor? Brian Jonathan, 15 Brook. Just very, very curious. Could you define what you would be using for a multi? Meaning, what could you use it for? Could you use it for anything? It, it, it's basically a combination of, of housing and, and uh, commercial. Uh, so it could be some retail mix in there. It's generally what, what mixed use means. Okay. Follow up question then. Where would it be applied? Where would you be looking to apply this to? Just that 202? Just that property. Okay. Um, one last. I know that you guys are looking to expand at some point the uh, byway, the bypass. How will that impact what you're looking to use this multi inclusionary for? Would it? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by impact. It, it's it's the the design and the construction plan for the for the bypass is already complete. So this is sort of a separate parcel. So um, it won't affect the the lot um, in terms of of, uh, of the property lines or anything uh, to like. If that's what you mean. I'm not sure I follow you. What your I, question? I guess be. what I'm saying is like as of now we have the bypass mm -hmm. correct. Um, I would figure that at some point you guys planned on continuing, meaning like you have where Hillsboro Road meets the end of the bypass. You do have space where you could bring it around to 202, 206. Um, do you plan on including like that along with the lot that you plan on developing? Well, the, like, so will you be structuring structuring this, that in with? So the state, it, the state's is building the bypass just to be clear but mm -hmm. the, the way it cuts the way it comes across and meets mountain view because that's where the terminus now is uh it, it ends at mountain view it sort of goes along the edge corner of the property so th think of that the property that's being discussed it's, it kind of 
if you're standing in front of Mountain View, it goes like on a diagonal towards Hillsboro. Uh, and you can kind of see the design if you stand, if you, if you drive past it and you kind of look and you can see where like the, it's already been graded for the bypass. They did the grading and planted the grass so that, that way the grading would wash away as the funds await to come down from Trenton. Uh, but it sort of goes right along. You, you can see like the, the diagonal line coming from there and that's the end point or end corner of that property. Okay, so, so then it just, it would just go along. adjacent to... Yes, and you can't, uh, the, the way the bypass is designed, and there's a thousand pictures of it online of that section, is that there can't be, you can't turn in and out onto the bypass from that section. You, so it wouldn't like. There wouldn't be no You wouldn't rest. be able to yeah, enter, exit enter. onto the bypass from that corner of the property. So just to clarify that, you would have a separate entrance into what you're going to be developing. I don't know what's huh. going to be developed here, but I, I just wanted to be clear that it, you wouldn't be able to exit or enter from, from the, the bypass. bypass that, of course. I was just and, trying to it, give you an idea of the way the bypass is being designed because you were asking how that would be together. Yeah, it's no, not it, it together helps. technically. I, and I just want to be clear. We are not developing it. We are oh, creating a zone. Really okay, I just want to make sure yeah. we're clear on that. No, that, I, I that, don't believe okay. that you're going to okay. go out there okay. with like a track. <laughs> well, well, I mean, but it's working. not a township property is what I meant by that. They're, you know, it's owned by, it, we're, we're creating the zoning uh, uh, requirements or, or the, uh, the uh, limitations in that, on that property for now. But someone would have to come in, the owner would have to uh, create the development. Right. Of course, and, and then. Okay. And it they, would be a whole application. They'd have to present a, a plan. There'd be hearings at the planning board. I mean, there's, there's, no, you know, right now nothing yeah. planned, for a lack of a better word, you know, on how that property is going to be developed. Okay. No Thank you for clarifying all that. It's Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Have a good night. Okay. Any other comments from the floor? Okay. Roll call, please. Member Shutt? Yes. Chairman Delcourt? Yes. Chairman Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. And Mayor Sarach? Yes. Uh, next ordinance 27-15, an ordinance authorizing acceptance of easements from New Amwell Associates, LLC. Further consideration of this ordinance and public hearing will be held on September 12, 2017. Uh, again, the acceptance of, of uh, property uh, can only be uh, done through an ordinance such as this. Uh, that again, the township attorney has reviewed this and uh, this ordinance and found it to be acceptable. I have a motion to introduce the ordinance. So move, Mayor. Second. Any additional comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Any okay, roll call, please? Commander Member Shep? Yes. Commander Delcourt? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. That includes introductions of new ordinances. We are now moving on to considerations. Uh, consideration number one, a resolution awarding a contract for 2017 Capital Road Resurfacing of New Amber Road, Section 1, Route 206 to Torres uh, Drive to Top Line Construction Corporation in an amount not to exceed $594,687.86. Uh, funding uh, for this um, is coming all from a, a DOT grant and also from a previous capital ordinance. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any additional comments from the dais? From the floor. Roll call, please. Commander Shep? Yes. Commander Zalcor? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Consideration number two, resolution authorizing adjustments in the amount not to exceed. Uh, oh. oh, hold on. No, no. Sorry. Oh. I do not have a dollar amount. Blah, 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 blah. 50000 50 cents. 50 cents. Sorry. Okay. Okay, not to exceed uh, $50,000 for the listed professionals uh, on, their, on their contracts for the year 2017. Uh, this resolution authorizes the adjustments required to complete our legal obligations through 2017. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? Floor? Roll call, please. Commander Shep? Yes. Commander Delcourt? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Commander McCauley? Yes. <laughs> Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Consideration number three resolution authorizing the purchase of a John 
uh, Deere Quick Track Commercial Mower in amount not to exceed $8,905.91 from Camps Hardware and Lawn Products, Inc. through the Middlesex Regional Educational Services Commission Cooperative Pricing System. Co-op number 65, bid number 15 slash 16 dash 08. Could they add a few more numbers and words to that? So moved. Second. Okay, so uh, any comments from the dais? I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so as you can guess, it's a replacement for a mower for a piece of equipment that is no longer repairable. So we have a motion a second. We have those. Okay, any those. comments from the, uh, from the floor? Okay, seeing none, roll call, please. Commander Burchett? Yes. Commander Delcourt? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Deputy Member Cawley? Yep. <clears throat> Mayor Sirachi? Yes. <clears throat> Rushing right through that one. Just mm -hmm. have a good time. Okay, consideration number four, resolution authorizing the purchase of a Bobcat all-wheel steer loader in amount not to exceed $95,728.10 from Garden State Bobcat through the Middlesex Regional Educational Services Commission Cooperative Pricing System, co-op number 65, bid number 15, uh, uh, slash 16-08. Um, actually, this Bobcat will, or this loader is to assist with our stormwater drain maintenance program, which is one of our state's unfunded mandates. So, okay, I got that off my chest. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? From the floor. Roll call, please. Member Shep? Yes. Member Mandelcor? Yes. Member Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Consideration number five, resolution authorizing special items of revenue and appropriation. Uh, this is to insert into the 2017 budget funds from various grants. Again, uh, these are additional fundings that we've received through these grants. So no impact on the, uh, the overall budget from a uh, tax uh, standpoint. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? From the floor? Roll call, please. Member Shep? Yes. Member Delcourt? Yes. Mayor Man Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Consideration number six, resolution authorizing the purchase of 300 tons of bulk rock salt from Mid-American Salt LLC in amount not to exceed $18,657 through the Morris County Co-op Purchasing Council contract number three. Um, by now, we're very fortunate. Salt prices are low, and this is actually uh, going to take advantage of that in advance of our 27-18 winter season. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any additional comments from the dais? From the floor? Roll call, please. Commander Shep? Yes. Commander Delcor? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Consideration number seven, resolution authorizing the hiring of Devin Santordo, a St. Hubert's animal control officer, to conduct a dog canvas at $20 per hour Effective August 9th, 2017. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any additional comments from the dais? From the floor. Roll call, please. Commander Burchett? Yes. Commander Delcor? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Consideration number eight, resolution authorizing a change order for the renovations of the Vanderveer House, or Vanderveer Harris House. Uh, this resolution authorizes various repairs. Uh, needed at the Vanderveer Harris House. May I have a motion? So moved, Mayor. Second. Comments from the dais? Floor? Roll call, please. Member Shep? Yes. Commander Delcor? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Moving on to the consent agenda, and I'm thankful I don't have to read all 34 items tonight. I think there's 35, isn't there? Uh, 35? 34. Uh, 34, have... sorry. Yeah, took one off. Okay, may I have a motion to approve this evening's consent agenda? So moved. Second. Is there any comments from the dais? Uh, Mayor, there's just uh, several um, personnel matters on the agenda. I just wanted okay. to uh, congratulate and, and uh, welcome some. And uh, we've had several that are uh, moving to permanent status. Um, we have a sergeant moving to uh, permanent status. We have a uh, fire inspector moving to permanent status. 
and um, we have a transfer, and uh, I think we have one of the employees, Joanne, in the back there. Yes. Uh, we'll be uh, moving over to uh, to the police department from the uh, from the court. So I just wanted to uh, say, well, congratulations to all of our uh, personnel <laughs> uh, matters tonight, and uh, obviously the town doesn't run as it does without uh, the great support of our employee base here. So thanks to all of them. Okay, and hi. There's one item here of note that I like just to mention is, um, let's see, we are going to yeah. on November 5th, uh, 2017, okay. on a Saturday, we will be holding the Peter J. Biondi 5K Memorial Run Walk in Hillsborough Township uh, that benefits SHIP, which is a Samaritan Homeless Interim Program, which was a uh, something I was very Near and dear to uh, the late assemblyman uh, Peter B uh, Biondi. So, so hold that date, November fifth. Uh, wait, wait. Any more comments from the dais? From the floor. Come on up. <laughs> Susan Gulliford on Club Road. Okay, number 31, the resolution approving person-to-person -person transfer of liquor license. Uh, I had two questions on that. Uh, from, the number, from the name, obviously it's a corporate name. I was wondering which liquor license was involved. And is this the one that was automatically not renewed last time? There was one, I think. It's a different one? Correct. It is a different license. This is the establishment that used to be um, by the former course cutters in that property there was a liquor oh, store okay the liquor okay. store that was there yes okay so that Thank license you. is being transferred okay. and any additional comments from the floor you seen none uh, roll call please commander ship yes commander Alcor. yes commander Thompson yes Deputy Mayor McCauley yes Mayor Sirachi yes and we move on to claims list and we have two this evening so may I have a motion to approve claims list 2017-14 and claims list 2017-15. So moved. Second, Mayor. Any comments from the dais? From the floor, roll call, please. Mayor Merchette? Yes. Mayor Zalcor? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. And this concludes our regular meeting. Just a reminder, our next meeting is September 12th. Um, however, we do have an executive session tonight. So, Ms. Bark, please read the resolution. You got it. Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas the Township Committee is of the opinion that such circumstances exist, now therefore it be resolved by the Township Committee in the Township of Hillsborough County, Somerset, State of New Jersey, as follows. Number one, the public shall be excluded from discussion of the here and after specified subject matters. Number two, the general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is as follows. A, contract negotiations, one, Apex Sports and Events, LLC, two, Fire District Extrication and Water Rescue, number three, Somerville Business Park, B, litigation, affordable housing, and C, contract negotiations, collective bargaining, Teamsters Local 701, num and number two, Teamsters Local 469. The Township Committee may take official action on those items discussed in the executive session upon the completion of the executive session. Number four, the minutes of those discussions shall be made available to the public as soon as matters under discussion are no longer of a confidential or sensitive nature. And number five, this resolution shall take effect immediately. Thank you. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments from Dais. Floor. Roll call, please. Committee Member Shett? Yes. Committee Member Zalcor? Yes. Committee Member Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes, and we will now move to executive session. Uh, good evening, everyone. Your next meeting is... Um, How are you doing?